This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Vice President Kamala Harris campaigns in Wisconsin today is the newly minted Democratic frontrunner for president. She's speaking in Milwaukee. It is my intention to go out and earn this nomination and to win. That's Harris speaking yesterday at the former Biden campaign headquarters in Delaware. Virtually all of Wisconsin's Democratic delegates are supporting her at their convention next month. And practically all of Wisconsin's top elected Democrats are endorsing Harris for president. That list includes Governor Evers and U.S. Representatives Gwen Moore and Mark Pocan. Other endorsements are coming from Senator Tammy Baldwin, Madison Mayor Santia Rhodes-Conway, and Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson. 89 of Wisconsin's 95 delegates to the Democratic National Convention say they're supporting Kamala Harris for president. Wisconsin Democratic Party Chair Ben Wickler. I have not heard anyone uh, share with me that they would oppose Vice President Harris as the nominee of our party, and I have every confidence that uh, as we move to November, we will be fully united as a party. Everything old will be new again at this year's Democratic Convention. Delegates and not primary voters will choose the nominee for the first time in about 50 years. Mike Wagner teaches journalism and politics at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Primaries were not binding uh, until the 1970s, and so we're really, in, in some, in, in in a small way, kind of reverting back to a convention where the party elites uh, will be choosing uh, the nominee. As Wagner speaking with Civic Media, lockdowns are lifted at two troubled Wisconsin state prisons. Green Bay and Waupun were locked down for several months. Four inmates died at Waupun during that time. Calls are growing to close the Green Bay prison. Mercury Marine is laying off 1,700 workers temporarily to make production adjustments. The layoffs will happen a week at a time for a total of up to eight weeks now through the end of the year and will impact mostly hourly employees. Mercury made 300 permanent job cuts last month. The company blames lower demand. Two people are dead after a plane crash near the EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh yesterday, the first day of the world's largest fly-in. All operations at Whitman Regional Airport were shut down. The names of the victims were being withheld this morning. The National Transportation Safety Board is looking into why it happened. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. This is news from WMDX Madison. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. A key program that helps Wisconsinites facing food insecurity is set to expire. SNAP, or the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, helps millions of families. It's part of the Farm Bill, which expires in September. Megan Rowe from Opportunity Wisconsin. SNAP benefits help over 700,000 Wisconsinites afford food, which is one in eight people in our state. And so gutting this assistance would mean that these families have to make difficult choices. Republicans and Democrats are at odds over a provision that allows the White House to make changes to SNAP without congressional approval. And lawmakers only have two more weeks in session before recess in August. We've been talking about ways to fix Madison's budget gap. Last week, Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway proposed two plans, a $22 million referendum plus extra city fees or a 5% cut across the board. Well, a Madison Alder has a new proposal that would mean a higher referendum but fewer fees. Under Alder Marsha Rummel's idea, you'd end up paying about the same. This just alters how how you pay it. This is an early proposal as city leaders brainstorm ways to fill that $27 million budget gap. And if you haven't registered to vote in next month's primary, there are deadlines coming up. Tomorrow is the last day you can register online or by mail. There are options after that, but they may be more time consuming. You'd have to register at your city clerk's office before August 9th, or you could register at the polls on Election Day. It's really easy to do. Just head to myvote.wi.gov. This is a partisan primary on August 13th, and everyone will be voting on two amendments to the Wisconsin Constitution. And after nearly 50 years in business, A1 Furniture and Mattress is closing. It's been family-owned here in Madison since 1980. They once had two locations, one on the west side off the Beltline near Todd Drive and another on Stoughton Road. There are closing sales all week at the east side store.
43 dairy herds in six states have confirmed bird flu infections. The USDA says right now the highly pathogenic avian influenza has not been detected in Wisconsin cattle, poultry, or wildlife. H5N1 is in states around us, including Iowa, Michigan, and Minnesota. The FDA says the commercial milk supply is safe because of pasteurization, and the USDA is confident meat is safe too. All cows brought to the Wisconsin State Fair next week will need to test negative for bird flu. And speaking of the State Fair, one of the most loved food has a big birthday. The cream puff turns 100. There are some special flavors to celebrate. They are root beer float, strawberry cheesecake, English toffee, and chocolate birthday cake. Last year, fairgoers enjoyed more than 300,000 cream puffs. The state fair starts next Thursday, August 1st, and runs through the 11th in West Dallas. This is big for Badger fans. Alcohol will be sold at Camp Randall this season. Last season, it was available for fans at basketball and hockey. We're talking beer, wine, and other prepackaged drinks like hard seltzers. Now, after decades without booze at the stadium, Badger fans have adapted. The pregame culture is strong here. UW-Madison Chancellor Jennifer Manukin says people will only be able to buy two drinks at a time, and anyone who appears under 40 will have to scan their ID. And that's what you need to know on this Tuesday. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. This is WMDX News. The Brewers lose to the Cubs. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers and Cubs battle at Wrigley Field. Chicago went through six pitchers to keep the Brewer bats at bay. Milwaukee made some costly errors in the field and lost the game 3-1. to one. Brewers manager Pat Murphy. You know, our bullpen was a little taxed tonight, but uh, Milner did a great job. And credit to the Cubs. They played in the clutch. They, they did what they had to do. And they pitched great six different guys, and they, they kept us at bay. We had opportunity and, you know, didn't, didn't get that big hit. Game two of the three-game series is tonight. Night. NFL, Jordan Love at practice, but will not suit up until he has a new contract. General Manager Brian Gutekinds talked about the 25-year-old quarterback at the team shareholders meeting. Jordan Love. <laughs> Jordan not only developed into one of the game's more exciting playmakers, his steady demeanor and leadership allowed our group to weather the storm and find our confidence as the season moved along. We're working very diligently to uh, sign him to a long-term extension. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Another box office record falls thanks to Twisters. The Twister sequel opened at number one at last week's box office, pulling in 80 million plus at the gate. It was the largest opening ever for a natural disaster film in America. Twisters is the third biggest opening of the year so far, behind Inside Out 2, which pulled in 155 million in its opening weekend, and Dune Part 2, which pulled in 82 million. As well as Twisters performed domestically, it underperformed overseas, pulling in about 42 million. That's still a lot of scratch. Neon Studios' surprise hit Long Legs continues to have long legs at the box office, pulling in almost $12 million and totaling $44 million in two weekends. The film cost less than $10 million to make. Other milestones reached include Despicable Me 4, which has now pulled in $260 million domestically, and Inside Out 2, which should pass $600 million at the domestic box office this week. It's sixth in theaters. So much for a summer slump. Typically, when a comedy club has co-headliners, it means neither one of the comics are ready to headline. The other night in New York City, it was just the opposite as Dave Chappelle and Jon Stewart took the stage Saturday night in Harlem at the Apollo Theater for one show only. Stewart opened and Chappelle closed. Both men tackled the subjects of Trump, Biden, Gaza, fame, and Ohio's men. Cell phones were not allowed in the theater, so there will be no pirated copies on YouTube, but I'm really hoping they put this out as a special. If you were a fan of the show Homicide, Life on the Street, you'll be able to give it a rewatch soon. If you've never seen the Baltimore-based show, which starred the late Andre Brower as Detective Frank Pembleton, I highly recommend it. Despite being a network show, it was more like a gritty streamer before there was streaming. Homicide was created by David Simon, who also created The Wire. The former NBC show will be available to stream on Peacock starting August 19th. Brendan Fraser likes Ike and will portray him in a new film called Pressure. The film tells the story of the D-Day invasion where troops stormed the beaches at Normandy. The Oscar-winning actor portrays the Supreme Allied Commander Eisenhower. Variety reports that Ripley star Andrew Scott will portray Britain's chief meteorological officer, James Stagg. Stagg informed Eisenhower of weather conditions that were crucial to the Normandy invasion. The project is in the early stages of pre-production. The Simpsons have done it again. The New York Post reports that in an episode from the year 2000 called Bart to the Future, Lisa Simpson becomes the first female president of the United States. In the episode, she is wearing the exact same outfit that Kamala Harris wore during the 2021 inauguration, right down to the pearl necklace and earrings. Simpsons writer Al Jean posted a picture of Lisa next to Harris in their matching outfits. Let's see if life will imitate art. 
For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Mostly cloudy today with scattered showers and thunderstorms likely. It's going to be muggy, too, with a high of 80. And some storms could produce some locally heavy rain, half inch to an inch or more. Not out of the question with some of those storms. Tonight, thunderstorms ending 63. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, cooler, 76. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it is 66. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio.